Mr. Sonnenberg here. Uh, today we're going to talk about external and internal forces. So this is for Science 7, seven students studying structures and forces and this is topic 4 in your textbook if you want to reference this for study purposes. So the first thing we're going to talk about are external forces. So uh, both external and internal forces and we're going to break them up and talk about them individually as well but uh, external forces uh, those are structures or stresses that act on a structure, and that's from outside the structure. Okay, um, whereas internal forces uh, or stresses, uh, that's within the materials that the structure is made of. So, uh, if I sit on a chair, I'm applying an external force. But what are the forces that the uh, possibly the plastics feeling from the weight of my body, and also the gravitational force that's being applied on that chair? Uh, what are what are those different forces and what are they causing are those internal forces and what's that external force causing the internal forces to do so anytime there's uh, internal stresses and we see this change of shape or size in the structure we call that a deformation and then that can lead to uh, we can, that can lead to damage in the structure, failure of the structure also we can bend things back into place so they, they function properly so if you just take a look at the diagram there, uh, it just the uh, diagram right here, it just shows uh, a lady sitting on a chair, just as I'm sitting right now, except for I'm not as pretty as that. Uh, <laughs> but I'm sitting on a chair in front of my laptop, and there's stresses being pressed down on the chair that I'm sitting on. Uh, this chair looks much more comfortable than the wooden one that I'm sitting on right now. But... Uh, Basically, there's external forces being exerted on the chair, but inside the chair, there's probably bending of the material, and the interior of the chair is actually feeling stress as well. And uh, there's also stresses on the table, at which is holding my laptop and the textbook and all the materials I need to complete the screencast. Coffee, keep me awake. But so the difference between external and internal is me sitting down is an external force on the chair but what's happening to the chair are internal forces within the different uh, uh, particles within the chair and how they react so we'll break that down we'll talk about it uh, throughout so there's an external force being placed down this direction on the chair and then the materials inside the chair are going to determine our internal forces so moving on, there's two types of external forces, and one I talked about uh, uh, was the live load, but first we'll talk about a dead load. So it is a permanent force acting on a structure. Uh, this includes the weight of the structure itself. So if, uh, for example, uh, a tabletop, if I was to take the tabletop and I was to draw it here, okay, I have the legs, and then I have the tabletop. This, wow. That's an awful drawing, sorry. Uh, so I have the tabletop right here. It is providing stress down on the legs. Okay, and it's a dead load. It's just the weight, or not the weight, the mass of the structure and the weight, which remember weight includes gravity. Okay, and that's going to cause a, uh, we call it a dead load, but it's going to cause stress on a structure. So we have to make sure that the structure can handle its own weight. So and remember we measure weight in newtons, okay? And weight is a type of force, okay? So and it's being placed down with gravitational force, which we know on Earth is 9.81 meters per second squared, just to throw that in there. Now the second part of this is a live load. Now this is something that can be changing. It's a non-permanent force. Now that's important to, to know. It's a non-permanent force acting on a structure. So it includes the force of, say, wind. So there's force being pressed against my, uh, my computer screen. Now, is it always windy? No. Am I always blowing on my screen? No. So uh, wind is one that sometimes it blows and it can cause stress on a structure and we see structures start to fall apart because of the wind sometimes. Um, and then also maybe a weight being placed upon it. So this chair that I'm sitting on, it doesn't always have somebody sitting on it. It's uh, It changes. It's an, I'm a non-permanent force on this chair, but right now I'm sitting on it and I'm causing stress on the chair because uh, I'm an external force and so I would be considered a live load. Okay, because I'm placing my weight, so my mass plus gravity, or uh, along with gravity, is being 
pressed upon uh, this chair. So uh, also another thing could be uh, we can see impact forces as well in these live loads. So uh, things that collide with other objects and then we have that live load and then that's again live because it's non-permanent force. It's hitting, providing a stress and force, boom, bounces off but that could damage the structure. So those are external forces, dead loads and live loads. Now moving on to internal forces, uh, I'm just going to go through these really quick and I've got lots of pictures for you guys to look at. So tension forces, so these are internal forces and all, the rest of these are going to be internal forces we're going to talk about. So now this is what's happening in the structure itself. What's happening to the particles in the structure? So now external is me sitting on the chair. Now what's happening to that wood, the particles of the wood? What's happening to the steel frame on the desk or on the chair, sorry. So that's what we're going to look at. So uh, the first type of internal force that we want to be aware of is called tension force. So this is when we stretch something. Okay. So if I was to take a material like this elastic band down here and I was to get one of you just to grab one end and we just pull on it, we're going to create tension. Now, a lot of you are athletes, you feel sometimes we create tension in our muscle and you can feel it stretching. Well, that's tension as well, okay? Or if someone says, uh, if there's any wakeboarders or tubers or water skiers, need a little more tension on the rope. You don't want to have slack, you want tension. So, same thing. So, we have this tension force um, and that's a pulling each of the ends apart of the material. So, tensile strength. That's the measurement, the measure, or it measures the largest tension force the material can withstand without failing. So if I was to take an elastic band and I was to stretch it, I'm going to me measure its tensile strength, and then all of a sudden, snap, it breaks. Okay, well, how much force could be applied to that tension force before it broke? And so that's tensile strength. And so you'll want to know the different, you'll want to know that tension forces, which is the stretching of a material, is measured in tensile strength. Okay, moving on. So, in other internal forces again. So, we're going to talk about compression forces. So, if you just uh, put draw your attention to this diagram right here, okay, it shows a gentleman in a hard hat jumping on a can. Okay, I don't know if anyone's ever done that. I know I used to crush cans when I was young. Thought I was tough, but now I know I'm not. Anyways. So uh, he's jumping on the can. He's compressing it. He's taking the structure and he is squishing it. He's squeezing it together. Okay. Same thing if you were to squeeze a stress ball. You compress that stress ball. Okay. So uh, this is basically you crush a material by squeezing it together. And that's what compression forces is. Now, how do we measure compressive strength? Well, that's just the measure of the largest compression force that a material can withstand before it loses its shape or it fails, right? So if I start pushing something together and it, it breaks, okay, well, what was the compression strength of that material? Or if I jump on a can, what was the compression strength before it lost its shape or it failed? Okay, so that's compression strength. Okay, the third type, excuse me, I'm battling allergies today, is shear forces. So basically, if I was to take uh, a sheet of paper, I don't know whose this is, it was in the textbook, and I shear it. Shear is going in opposite directions, and now I've separated the paper into two pieces. I can shear it again. Do it again. I can shear it again. Now, uh, so basically, what I did there was I tore this, okay? So I didn't bend it, but I tore the material. Okay, and, and I ripped it in opposite directions. Ugh, sorry, I can't draw lines today. So, but that was a shear force. Now I've drawn a picture up here of some shears. Okay, can snip hedges, trees, whatnot. And I've also drawn a couple other examples like this one right here and this one where the material has been sheared. Okay, and it's broken off. So that's shear. We measure that in shear strength. So that measures the largest shear force the material can withstand 
before it rips apart. So again, remember we were working on tissues and we wanted to know what knit materials and how the strength or, or what their strength was before it tore. Well, again, we're, we've, we've sheared it. We've sheared that material. Uh, same thing with paper. What's the shear force that can be applied to this paper? before it actually rips and tears into pieces, right? So it was relatively easy for me to tear that, but I'm also quite strong. No, I'm not. I'm sure all of you can rip paper. All right, another one. Torsion forces. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of anybody say torque. Uh, I need to torque this. Or there's too much torque, or you need to create more torque, especially if you're an athlete. But basically what that is is the twisting material by using ends in the opposite direction. So if I was to take this and I wanted to, twist it, I would twist the material in opposite directions. This hand's going towards the screen, this one's going away, and I would try to twist it and torque it, okay? And we measure that in uh, torsion strength, again, so very similar to the other strengths, okay? It measures the largest torsion force the material can withstand, okay? Before it springs back or uh, into its original shape. So if you take a look here where torquing this material. I don't know if anyone's ever seen a garage door, but you have to twist. When I put my garage door up in my house, I had to use these bars and I had to twist uh, the springs up above so that the door will go up and it'll go down, but I had to create torque. So there was torsion forces being applied to that spring and I had to torque it up and then I, yeah, I had to be very careful actually put the bar in and put another one in and turn it and I had to go a certain number of turns because of the size of the door and what happened was uh, I created a lot of strength and then you have to lock it into place and that's how the door can go up and it can go down is because there's that torsion force and so that torsion strength was quite high if I was to let go it would have unwound back to its original, posi original position I probably would have got hit with a bar it uh, wouldn't have been a good situation. Luckily, I got through it, and I'm here, and the door works fine. So, anyways, torsion forces, that's the twisting at both ends of the material, and then it creates torsion strength, and that's the largest torsion force that can be applied before it springs back. And we're going to explore all these different forces in class, but it's good to know about them ahead of time. Now, in, another internal force is a bending force. So this is basically a combination of two types of forces. So it's a combination of, one, tension, and two, compression. Now, this tension and compression, remember tension forces, that's stretching and compression is uh, squeezing together. So, shear and tension forces are also a combination of tension and compression. But this bending force, if you take a look here, we're applying a load. So, this individual is bending a ruler. Okay? So, now we have our supports in our hands right here. Okay? But the load and the stress is being placed right where this arrow is right here on the material. Now it, there's a bending force occurring because one, we're compressing the ruler together, okay? And then it, it uh, is actually uh, applying tension at the same time. So the bending force, or even over here with the wood with the weight on the end of it, okay? We're creating a bending force. Now what's happening to those particles that are holding the structure together, what forces are going on internally between the different structures or between the different particles that hold it together and how much force can it withstand before it actually breaks, right? And so we can actually test these things. But uh, there's also bending force as well. And the last thing we'll talk about, I know this is a long screencast, but um, it's the only screencast in topic four that we're going to talk about is resisting strength okay or resisting stress so it's not an actual force but how do we resist stress what what do the materials do to resist it and so i've called this the inside view um, and what i actually have here is rubber and i know i have a picture of a stick here but i just wanted to show you someone bending and uh, no that's not my brother i'll just say that right now not my brother <laughs> just in case you wanted to ask. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, we take a material, we start to bend it or we apply forces. And what happens to the tiniest particles of the material? Right? What are those forces between 
the particles and and how come we can bend something why don't we just go and it breaks why isn't it very brittle why do we get that strength where we can bend things or where we can compress without it breaking or changing shape or we can actually put apply tension force to things or or torsion force and we can twist it how come we can do that so i just have a a picture of rubber so now we have these little particles inside so what's happening is these are actually going to be attracted to one another and so these particles okay each particle of this rubber is actually going to attract another particle and they're just going to attract each other so if you look I'm drawing lines of attraction we'll call those okay so again these are all becoming attracted to one another and when you become attracted then they want to bond together and they want to bind same thing over here I'll draw these in red same thing these are going to attract to one another so when you have attractive forces you want to stay together if they repelled they would fall apart and they wouldn't stay together but because they're attracted to one another and they cling to one another these if each one of these particles inside the structure has these attractive forces then what's going to happen is it's going to bind. So why does rubber stay together so long? Because those forces are strong and they attract. And all of these, okay, all of these particles are going to attract to each other. So I'll draw lines between them all because they're all attracted to one another. And that's what binds the material together. And that's why these internal forces, that's why we can, we can withstand, or these structures can withstand so much internal stress, or they can resist that stress with these internal uh, forces because of the way the particles attract to one another. So we see these, this rubber, well, all those particles inside the rubber are going to attract to one another. They're gonna bind to one another. And that's why when we stretch rubber, we can apply a lot of tension force to rubber because the particles are so strongly attracted and they attract one another and that's what creates that strength. We can bend rubber because again those forces they can resist stress because the particles are attracted to one another. Anyways, hopefully this screencast has helped. This is internal and external forces topic four in your textbook. Please take down notes um, and if you need to rewatch sections of the screencast please do it. Um, and then bring your questions to me on uh, the next class. We're actually going to explore external and internal forces through lab activity, which will be a lot of fun. So prepare yourself for that. And I want to make sure that uh, you have viewed this screencast. And if you haven't, please tell your classmates that they should view it as well. All right. Hopefully this has helped. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And uh, we'll see you on the next screencast. Okay. Bye.